Creo Parametric 11 supports tables for model-based definition. In this video, we will take a look at editing, resizing, erasing, and adding security markings. Here I am in an assembly model. Let me change over to one of my combination states that has some tables in there. And first off, I want to start editing some of the different cells in the table in the bottom right. One way that you could do that is by going to a cell and then double clicking. And you can see that we have a cursor and I can delete the text and change it to what I want. The other way instead of double clicking a cell is to click the cell and then use the F2 key and that'll do the same thing as double clicking in the cell. And that way I can start filling in some information in this cell. Let's say I want to move to another cell. You can do that with the tab key. So I'll hit tab and it goes to the next cell and then tab again. Let's hit tab a few more times. You can see how I am advancing through here. If you want to move to a previous cell, you could use shift and the tab key. So I'll do shift tab, shift tab, shift tab, shift tab until I get to the cell that I want. Now I will enter in the name of one of my friends. Now I have the text in there. I'm happy with that. So I can click outside of the table and I am done with my editing. Now let's take a look at resizing. I will click in a cell for this particular table. And when you do that, you get the format tab in your dashboard and here's where you can change the height and width but another way of doing that is by putting your mouse over the cell border and then dragging it whichever direction that you want it to be let me grab this one over here and drag it over there grab this one and drag it over here you'll notice that the way that you drag it which cell that you're affecting depends on the direction of growth of the table so for example i think if i try this cell over here and i grab this one it's going to grow to the right instead of growing to the left based on how the table was set up you can also change the size of an entire table so for example let me select this table over here and you can see that we have a drag handle for changing the size. Now I'll grab this and I can just drag it whatever way that I want from here. But there is another way for resizing. If you want the size to change proportionally, hold down the shift key. So for example, let me select this table and here's my drag handle. I hold down shift this time and everything is changing proportionately as I'm making that one bigger. Let's do that for this table over here. Hold down the shift key. You can see how the size is changing for the entire table. Okay, that is good. Let me jump over to a, another combination state. So this particular state has a table over here. I can click in a cell and right now I just have the mini toolbar for that particular cell, but let me change to selecting the entire table. And now when I hold down the right mouse button in the mini toolbar, I am going to have the erase command. And so when I choose to erase it, it is temporarily not visible on this particular sheet. Let me go to my tree and switch over to the annotate tab. Here you can see there's the table and the icon is a little grayed out indicating that it is erased. I can left click on it. And then from the mini toolbar, here we have the unerase command in order to bring it back. And the last thing to take a look at in this video, adding security markings. If you apply the security marking to an annotation, it will be visible on all your combination states and it will be visible in any other applications that support security markings. So first off, let me just step through some of my different combination states. Here's default all, no tables, 6A, one table, four notes. I have notes, but no table, three properties, no tables, titles i have those three tables over there let me collapse my model tree and then i have zero model only so you'll see that most of my combination states do not have tables on them 
Let me go back to, to titles and I decide that this table I want to use as a security marking. So I have selected the table. Right now, security marking is grayed out. Let me make sure that I have the entire table selected and I'm just querying to making sure that I get the entire table. Let me try that. Yep, now I have the whole table selected. Here is the security marking option that you have from the format tab. Be aware that this option is available only for tables that are flat to screen. So let me choose security marking. Now that I've designated that as a security marking, let's step through the combination states once more. I'll go to default all. Hey, that table is in there. Go to six assemble. Hey, it's in here as well. Go to four notes, it's in here. Go to three properties, it's in here. Let me jump over to zero model only. It is in here as well. Let me select it again. One, two, three. There we go. Here I can turn off security marking, but be aware when you turn it off as a security marking, it is still going to be in all these different combination states. So you could select the table and then choose to remove it from the combination state for any ones that you no longer want it to appear in. Let me do that once again from here, hit the minus sign, and maybe I wanna also go to default all and remove it from there. So there you have it. That is how you can use some of the other additional editing functions for your tables, including changing the text, resizing, erasing, and security markings.